Hello and welcome to McLaren Port Huron's Today's Health Program. I'm your host, Michelle Baker. Today we're going to talk about hernias, which is a condition that affects both men and women. Joining me now is board certified general surgeon, Dr. Zubin Basenia. Doctor, thank you for speaking with us today. Thanks for having me on the show. Now let's begin with what is a hernia? Well, a hernia is simply defined as a hole in the abdominal wall and it can occur anywhere on our body. What are the most common types of hernias that you see in your practice? The most common hernias are located on the abdominal wall and we see inguinal hernias, which are in the groin. We have umbilical hernias that are at your belly button. And we have incisional hernias that are located along previous incisions. Now let's start with an inguinal hernia. Will you describe this for our audience? Sure, it's actually the most common hernia we see. And, and basically, the groin has unique anatomy where several layers of the abdominal wall come together and there's a potential area for weakness. So a groin hernia can happen in a man or a woman. It's more commonly in men. Um, and what people complain of is either a mass or have some pain in that area. What are the causes of an inguinal hernia? So inguinal hernias can be congenital, so that you can be born with one, or you can acquire one during life. The congenital hernias occur because during development, the area of the abdominal wall where the hernia is at doesn't close properly, and it's an area of weakness. And what we'll see is newborn babies with a small hernia. And acquired ones occur during your life, and when you have lifting, straining, coughing, and the area is weak, you can develop a hernia. So basically the pressure from any type of strain. Correct. So anything that increases intra-abdominal pressure, it can be pregnancy, it can be obesity, it can be coughing, can create a hernia. Now what are the symptoms of an inguinal hernia? Most people will complain of some discomfort. They may say, I feel something moving back and forth at my groin. They may have a bulge that comes and goes. How do you diagnose this? Well, typically, when patients come to see us, they have a pretty good idea something's going on. So we do a little history. We'll ask them questions whether they feel a mass regularly. Do they have pain regularly? Do they have a mass that develops when they strain? And then when we examine them, we'll actually examine the area of the groin canal and have them cough or strain and feel for a hernia. Sometimes the hernias are very small and patients will give us symptoms of a hernia and history of a hernia and we can't feel it. And in those special cases, we'll do a CAT scan to help find a small hernia. Now, other than pain or discomfort, are there other health risks that are associated with having this type of hernia? Sure. Hernias can be a nuisance because they have pain or a bulge, but they can also be life-threatening. If a hernia becomes incarcerated, what that means is the contents of the hernia is stuck in the hernia. And if it's a piece of bowel, it can cause a significant problem because it can cause a bowel obstruction leading to that portion of bowel to die. So that's pretty serious. Sometimes people think you have a hernia, it might be small, you can live with it, but there are some serious complications that can occur. Oh sure. Every year I come across patients that have had a hernia for years and they just didn't want to fix it and then all of a sudden it becomes a surgical emergency because a piece of bowel is stuck in the hernia. What are the treatment options for this type of hernia? So. Hernia surgery has come a long ways and with the advent of laparoscopy and now we have the robot, hernia surgery has improved. So we have the open technique where we make an incision to find the hernia and close the hernia. And then we have the laparoscopic or minimally invasive technique where we use small incisions and are able to do the procedure minimally invasively either via a laparoscope or the robot. Doctor, how is an inguinal hernia repaired? So basically, the inguinal hernia is a hole in the abdominal wall, and there's a hernia sac that comes through the abdominal wall. And the key to treatment is to either remove the hernia sac or push it back into the abdomen where it belongs, and then we close the defect. And most commonly, we use a mesh product to close the defect. What is the anticipated recovery from this surgery? So if someone undergoes an open repair, they're typically you know, off work for at least a week, and it's no heavy lifting for four to six weeks, and heavy lifting is approximately 20 pounds. So there really are limited restrictions for, for you know, four to six weeks. Laparoscopy or robotically, people will return to work sooner. So in some issues, I've had patients go back to work the next day after a hernia surgery, provided they're not doing any heavy lifting. Um, they still have a weight restriction 
of a few weeks, but it's generally a quicker recovery compared to an open repair. Well, it sounds like the, the laparoscopic or the robot surgery is much easier to recover from. Are there certain times, though, that you cannot do that surgery? You have to do it open? Yes. Um, occasionally we'll see a massive hernia where people have had a hernia for a long period of time and the hernia has grown. And in those cases, we have to do it in an open technique. If someone has an incarcerated hernia with a bowel obstruction and you're worried about the piece of bowel not surviving, then we'd have to do it in an open technique. Doctor, this is great information. It's time for a break. We'll continue in a moment.